Hey, welcome back. I'm Lei. The space shuttle is one of the most iconic rockets in the space industry. Its design was bold, powerful, and innovative. And during its 30 years of service, it has sent 135 missions, including transporting most components of the International Space Station. It surely is a piece of engineering marvel. However, it has also received a fair amount of criticism. Truth be told, space shuttle was meant to do more. It was supposed to revolutionize the space industry, like what SpaceX is doing right now, bringing down the cost of space travel. However, it failed miserably at that. With five orbiters built, two of them resulted in the deadliest accidents in the history of space. So, what on earth happened? Let's talk about that in today's video. Although the maiden launch of the space shuttle happened in 1981, NASA started conceptualizing its design two decades earlier, even before the Apollo missions. Ever since its inception, reusability is the most important thing considered. X-15 was proposed to make it happen. Aircraft fans must be familiar with X-15 because it is, until today, the fastest aircraft ever built. Not only was the speed of 7,274 kilometers per hour achieved, in 1963, X-15 also became the first aircraft that successfully crossed 100 kilometers altitude to enter the outer space. Its pilot, Joseph A. Walker, became the first man to have reached outer space with an aircraft. Just to give you guys some perspective, at booster separation, Falcon 9 flies at a speed of around 5,000 kilometers per hour to reach lower Earth orbit. So X-15 is no doubt a very capable aircraft. However, scientists soon realized that the X-15 architecture would not work because the sheer amount of energy needed. You need much more fuel to reach a stable orbit. Yet the amount of fuel on X-15 can only sustain itself for two minutes. Therefore, in 1968, NASA officially began working on what was called the Integrated Launch and Reentry Vehicle. The aim is to design a spacecraft that could deliver a payload to orbit, but also re-enter the atmosphere and fly back to Earth. This is now known as the Phase A of the space shuttle design. After this, Phase B, C, and D progressively evaluated in-depth designs up to 1972. In the final design, the bottom stage consisted of recoverable solid rocket booster and the top stage used an expandable external tank, similar to the design of the final space shuttle. So as you can see, not only was the space shuttle designed much earlier than 1981, reusability has also been its core design element ever since its inception. Indeed, it was a logical next step for space exploration. In 1972, we had just ended the Apollo program, which landed humans on the moon. It also brought us the realization that if we want to continue our space exploration, we need to make rockets affordable. Hence, the focus on reusability and the creation of the space shuttle. With the design ready in 1975, NASA finally got the green light to build it. Remember, at that time, we had just landed humans on the moon. We were not going to settle for anything less, and NASA was determined that the space shuttle is the way to do it. Consisted of three components, two of them are designed to be reusable. An external fuel tank, two solid rocket boosters, and an orbiter vehicle. Two solid rocket boosters provided over 5 million pounds of thrust during liftoff. After burning for about two minutes, these two boosters were jettisoned and a parachute would deploy for recovery. It was subsequently refurbished and reused after every mission. The orbiter vehicle, on the other hand, will fly back to Earth like an airplane, but with a lot of difficulties. We have built in total five of them. Furthermore, not only was the space shuttle reusable, it was also supposed to enable reusability of commercial satellites. Previously, any malfunctions of space probes or communications satellites launched on expendable rockets resulted in the complete loss of the payload. Now, using the shuttle, the payload can either be repaired on orbit or returned to Earth, thus saving hardware worth millions of dollars. Not only were satellites lost due to malfunctions, they were custom made for specific missions and were not reusable. But because the space shuttle can retrieve orbiting satellites and return them to Earth, 
A new generation of satellites is now being built using replaceable modular parts. As a result, many companies started building modular satellites anticipating the accessibility that could be brought about by the space shuttle. However, as we all know, a prosperous space industry did not happen. It turns out the space shuttle did not bring down the cost as we predicted, and it did not bring us the accessibility of space as we hoped. The accident in 1986 killed it. 73 seconds into the flight, the Space Shuttle Challenger broke apart with five NASA astronauts and two payload specialists on board. This got us questioning the reliability of Space Shuttle, and as a result, the Space Shuttle program was stopped for two years. In fact, I would even argue that after 1986, it was already clear to the engineers and scientists that the Space Shuttle is never going to be the revolutionary vehicle it was designed to be. Its reliability is of question, and its reusability did not guarantee a lowered cost or an increased launch frequency as promised. Furthermore, the Challenger incident also reflected a deeper problem at a structural level that destined the cancellation of the space shuttle program. Maybe he's referring to this, was the discovery of these weaknesses inside of NASA and their attitudes, mm -hmm. this kind of illogic about safety and so forth, which was so extensive from an organization which had such a reputation in the country that it was hard for us to find it out in a sort of emotional way as to have to come around and say that the Wizard of Oz, which everybody respects, has nothing behind it. As Richard Feynman so painfully pointed out in the CNN interview after the accident, it's almost hard to pinpoint what went wrong in this accident because so many safety rules were not followed. After this unfortunate incident, NASA finally adjusted its expectations of the Space Shuttle program, launching less than five times per year instead of 60 that was originally designed. After yet another accident in 2003 which killed seven astronauts, everyone knows the end is near for the Space Shuttle program. At this point, I hope it's already clear to you guys why the Space Shuttle program was cancelled. In my opinion, ending the program has a few obvious reasons. First and foremost, in 2011, the last piece of the International Space Station was delivered safely by the Space Shuttle Endeavour, and thus, the Space Shuttle program has achieved its strategic objective. Second, the last reason that has become clear to me as I was researching this video is that the technology was too outdated. Think about it. Most components of the Space Shuttle were designed in the 1970s. This means many of them would have been obsolete if not for the Space Shuttle. In 2002, it was reported that NASA bought a load of outdated medical equipment so that it could salvage Intel 8086 chips that were used in the Space Shuttle. This is just one example. Think about suppliers of other components. NASA has to keep all of them alive so as to get those parts supplied. This means paying salaries to thousands of workers even during the years space shuttles were not active. This is also why after taking into consideration maintenance and design, average cost per launch is estimated to be $1.5 billion instead of the $450 million that was often reported. This is why, in my opinion, all those painful lessons we have learned in the past years empowered us to appreciate the value of commercialization because no one can manage cost better than a commercial company. Most importantly, making hard decisions when hard decisions are due. Taking SpaceX as an example, could SpaceX continue with its Falcon 9 architecture? Yes, Falcon Heavy is more than capable of achieving any conceivable mission objectives currently. It is the most powerful rocket in the industry. But SpaceX made its decision to focus on building the BFR to achieve its objective which is to enable interplanetary travel. It's a hard decision, but SpaceX made it. However, could NASA have ended the Space Shuttle program when it's clear that there is virtually no benefit from its reusable system? I'm not sure. Also, when you have a rocket launching in 2011 but running systems half a century old, you can be sure that it's not the best system in the world. However, I am hopeful. That's why I called this chapter a new era, because we have a new fellow in this chapter, SpaceX. It is ambitious and capable just like NASA in the 1980s, but it's also at the same time agile and not afraid of change. The torch of reusability is now passed down to SpaceX. 
I am hopeful that this time we've got it right. That this time we can finally achieve the accessibility we wanted decades ago. Thank you all so much for watching. I think a rocket that is as iconic as the space shuttle demands a more in-depth video like this one. Hope you guys enjoyed this long video. Follow me on my social media if you want to talk. All right, I'm Lei. I'll catch you guys later.